hi welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new my name is laura hi hello welcome today we are going to do a full face of first impressions um i will preface by saying that my intention moving forward is to purchase from black owned businesses and i made these purchases back in may and just never got around to using them or playing around with these so i am in the future going to be buying predominantly from black owned businesses and inclusive businesses. Also, I will have some resources down below in the description box of black owned businesses that you can support as well as ways that you can donate and raise awareness to Black Lives Matter and internal um, oppression and um, systemic racism. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this video if you like first impression videos. If you want to see how I got this dramatic green eye look keep on watching i wanted to start um this like trying new makeup like new products video with actually a new skincare product so i washed my face and that was it earlier this morning and i've just kind of not put any skincare on which i normally put skincare on almost every morning after i wash my face so i'm going to try this versed just breathe clarifying serum i um, just finished, um, that time. So my skin's a little like freaked out. So I'm just going to drop some into my hand and then work that in. It kind of, it doesn't really have a smell. It's like, it smells like nothing, which in and of itself is kind of like having a smell, right? It's nice. It has like a slight tack to the skin however I feel like that's the case with a lot of these like dropper bottles like my um the ordinary products the matrixel that's the one I have the matrixel oil and the hyaluronic acid all had like the same kind of feel where it's just like I don't know if you'll be able to hear I don't know but that goes away with like your moisturizer and stuff. So what I am going to do is just kind of do the rest of my skincare. So I have my eyes primed with my P. Louise Rumor 2. Is that what you are? Rumor 2 base. Um, And I don't know what color to start with and I'm nervous. I think I'm going to start with, is it Aya? Yeah, Aya. Um, just on a big fluffy brush just oh my gosh i can't believe i'm dipping into this just to kind of make a transition this palette's a little squeaky then the next thing i am going to play with um some of these like green cool tone shades so first thing i want to do is go in or i guess next thing i want to do is go in with stone here same brush and i guess i'm gonna put that on like the inner this is a really interesting shade like in here it doesn't look like it would be sorry that blue toned but it is i think it's like very like blue gray and now i'm just kind of buffing that into aya that's really really pretty i really like that i'm gonna take this brush and we're gonna dip into mm, I think Rhino and I'm gonna just put that this shade reminds me a lot of um, Untamed in the ABH subculture palette okay and I really just wanted to place that down and now I'm gonna just blend it all that is really nice I picked up a little bit more rhino and just really just putting that on like the center section of the crease i like that quite a bit actually i'm gonna just take the same brush that i used to pick up a rhino and pick up fata morgana and just kind of place that right on the outer corner I have a um, 
just a washcloth. I'm gonna wipe off this brush and then I'm just gonna start blending um, Fata Morgana and Rhino. Man, this is just really pretty. Um, taking that brush that had, what is that, stone and Aya on it and just kind of fluffing everything because I really just want this to be super blended. Um, I'm going to just go in with Rhino and I'm just going to put that on like the outer half of the lid. Now I will also say that there is like a bit of kick up. I don't know if you could really see it, but there is like a tiny bit, way less than ABH shadows. Um, kick up doesn't bug me. And I feel like that blended pretty darn easy, um, to be quite honest. So not, not mad with how this is turning out so far. I don't really want to do much else. And I'm going to take Aya again. That was that first shade we used. I'm just kind of loading it up on the brush just to blend the very top. And what I am going to do now, I'm a little nervous because I do like, I like these. So this is Slime. This is by Melalops. This here. I will say the, the packaging on this isn't the best. The sifter that's in these like easily gets removed. So you have to be pretty darn careful with it. So like this has a bit of shadow in it and it's completely sealed. Like I haven't used this. And I'm going to just, I guess, show you what I mean. This thing easily comes out. Like I didn't have to try at all, which is a little um, concerning because it's going to be very messy in that case. I am going to cut my crease or at least attempt to cut the crease. Actually, I think that is the most even cut crease I've ever done. A super small packer brush. This is like an unnamed one from Morphe, but any small eyeshadow brush that you have or your preferred lid brush would work. And I'm going to just pat. I really, this is so pretty. That is unreal. That is so pretty. Oh my gosh. I think there might definitely be like a learning curve to this just because it's a neon and I don't know how. I've never really worked with neons before, so I think that's why it might be a little patchy, but that could just be like maybe I need to use a like maybe I didn't work on the base quick enough. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if you guys are going to see like right here it's just a little patchier so i don't know i don't think it's gonna get better okay so i like mocked making this a um shimmer shadow tapping on some of my stila diamond dust and then putting this on top of it to like change the color of like the iridescent shimmers in this okay and i have like sufficiently have fallout city but i like how that shimmer is on and then i'm going to kind of do some blending on the outer third so i'm going to take rhino and then just kind of pat um right in between and then taking that first brush and then just really going to town and buffing out i mean i guess it's maybe a little patchy on the outer corner but it could just be the shade i don't know i'm going to take a little bit of rhino and mix it with aya and then, or stone and mix it with eye, excuse me. And then just buff. I didn't really like the shape that I made, so I'm just going um, and making this almost like elongated on the outer corner. I don't have a new foundation or anything like that, so I am going to just put my primer foundation and uh, I will 
come back with my concealer. So I have a couple concealers. I have the Bye Bye Under Eye in the pot, as well as in this like little tube. They're two different colors. This one is medium. This one is light natural. So I don't know which one will fit me. So that is what that guy's looking. Maybe a little too dark for me. It might make a good under eye corrector though. Light natural is probably almost a smidgen too light. It looks like my Pete Louise base. Are they the same product? So I'm actually gonna probably take a mix of both because I feel like one's too dark, one's too light. I'm gonna take it on my flat brush that I used initially with the P. Louise base. I wiped it clean. I'm gonna take it on there and then mix it with what's on my hand, which is that lighter. Maybe I should have tried them both separately, but we're here now and this is how we're gonna test it. Oh, she feels like the P. Louise base. Very like thick, which might make a really awesome under eye concealer actually. I am like breaking out a little bit right now because it's just past my time of the month. So things are a little wild for my skin, which is great. Just wonderful for me. I will say maybe I wish I would have had a, a sponge with a point. This one is just completely spherical, making it a little bit harder to get into the inner corner. I feel like it covered better on this side than this side, so I'm gonna just, whatever is like residually on the brush. I'm gonna take some of the darker one. I'm picking up, this is like about how much I picked up before, and I'm gonna show you. I picked up just a really small amount, so like not a lot at all. It's really my chin that has like the most like redness and like scarring and just spots from when I break out. It's just like that's where I break out so it just the spots usually just show up there. I mean I really liked it for my under eyes. I like a thicker concealer though because usually that means it's going to be a little bit fuller coverage and I mean I just prefer very full coverage concealers. But I think that actually looks pretty nice. I don't think that it covered nearly as much as I would like and anticipate something that thick to cover. Uh, but again, it could just be like the amount of product. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more and just slap that whole thing down there. Just taking the brush or the sponge and blending. I feel like that's covering better now. I mean, it's still not perfect. I can still see like dark spots. I just have a really hard time covering this area on my chin, which is really annoying. I think that it looks really nice under my under eyes, actually. Like that tiny, tiny bit. But it really does remind me of like the P. Louise base. Oh, I do have a new bronzer, but where did I put it? Right in front of me. This is the Body Shop Coconut Bronze. This is a matte bronzer. I am super excited to try this. I think this was like a new line by The Body Shop. And since I just finished my bat bronzer, I figured I'd try this. Oh cute, it has like a little thing in it. Oh my gosh, this is so soft. Like why are you so soft? And it's a little warm. It's almost lighter than I thought it was gonna be. I definitely thought it was gonna be darker and like more cool toned, kind of like the butter bronzer. I thought that was gonna be what this was like. So that is what this guy is looking like. It has like a cute little palm implant. Implant, wow, that was, so that was really powdery. I did not expect that. I'm gonna just buff it into the brush on the lid because it is very powdery. I did not expect it to be that powdery. And it's a little more orange than I kind of wanted in when I was picking it out. I don't mind an orange bronzer because I think that they just make you look a little bit more like actually like sun-kissed. But this is very orange. It doesn't have a scent. It, it kind of maybe smells like soap. Not really happy with the color of it. Uh, this is so orange. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm just buffing 
things out. It's not terrible. It's it's not. Like I think that it buffs out. It looks pretty nice. It looks sun-kissed on my skin. And I mean, I will use it. It's not like I won't get my money's worth out of it. So, it's it's okay. And then I do have a br a blush that I haven't used. It's been in my collection since February. Um I guess March, really. Um it's the what are you? The Cat's Eye blush, the Sailor Moon one. I know that this is sold out and I honestly don't know if ColourPop ever is going to bring this back, which is really, really annoying. Um, but that is this guy here. Oop, but that is this guy. She's really pretty, really sparkly. Um, has Luna's little face in there. And I'm going to take my blush brush and just tap into it. Oh, <laughs> why am I a mess today? I didn't expect it to be this pig. It's like everything. I'm just like, I didn't expect it to be this pigmented. I like this blush though. I think it's a really pretty, pretty shade. Like very like watermelony. I think it would be really pretty in the summer. So that is the blush all blended out. I'm gonna um tap more on with this. I did not pick any more up. It just wanted to kind of place the rest of the color and like feather it upward. Okay. Like, how many things could I, like, actually mess up in this video where I'm like, oh, 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 oh. Okay, now we're going to do the lower lash line. Knowing my streak right now, I'm, it's, it's probably going to get frogged up. Just pick some of this green up and place that in the front of my lower lash line. All right. And then, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe pick up Rhino first on the same brush. I'm going to take the brush that had the bright green on it and just kind of fluff that into, like, the transition area of, like, Rhino right here. Like, a little lower than where I placed the darker, like, greeny blue. Kind of helping merge the bright green and then like the darker shade, but also like just to kind of transition it. I'm going to also do that same thing on the top, just kind of, because I don't want it to be like very stark difference. And then I'm going to take the brush that had Aya on it. I'm going to load Aya up, which was that like nude shade, and then just blend the entire bottom of that lower lash line work now I'm going to take a I guess I'm going to take like this pencil brush and I'm going to pick up this shade here this is by dandelions company um this is the shade Ain. I really really love this um like it's an indie brand it's like on Etsy really love love it and the guy is so nice like the owner of it is so so nice so Ain looks white in the pan, but it actually has like a green, like gold shift to it. And I think he describes this as like an actual like shadow topper, but in the inner corner, it looks stunning. Um, I'm going to do my brows and I'm going to do like my mascara and then I'm going to come back. This is the ColourPop BFF liner, uh, the lippy pencil in BFF3. I think I swatched it once, but I've never actually worn it. So I'm going to put the butter gloss just on top of this in like hopes that I can get this to kind of spread and lighten. It's a little more fall time of a lip color than like what I would want to wear with this. But again, I'm working with what I have right now. Uh, I am going to just top on, this is ColourPop Layover. Just to help tone the color down a little bit. Not bad. It's like a little bit orangey, which I think complements and contrasts against the like super intense green of this. I'm going to just wrap up with some thoughts. Yes. The Versed uh, Just Breathe Clarifying Serum. I don't know if this is, does anything yet. It felt fine on the skin. It's um a little tacky, but I mean, it didn't wow me. It didn't disappoint me. 
I so far really like this palette however I will say when I was putting my foundation on I did it in my bathroom rather than like in front of like my window here just because I didn't have to hold a mirror and like put on my foundation and it did look like the eyeshadow was patchy so I did have to like off camera really fuss and blend the shades um I think really it's just the shades Rhino and Fata Morgana um, I think those kind of shadows are just harder to formulate and they are just patchy like inherently. I think that I did a good job but I think still you can see that it's like a little faded and like a little patchy right there. Like right where I was blending and working to get like this intense green into the like more teal shade. I mean, I got it to work. I think it looks fine. I think in real life you would never really be able to see and no one was like gonna be like that inspecting of your eyes. But I do wanna just kind of like make a note that I think these two shades, um, Rhino and Fata Morgana, are gonna be just inherently a little bit more fussy to work with. I think that they work a lot better than the ABH Untamed and Access that is in the subculture palette. I think that they blend a lot better than that but just like they might need a little bit more finessing with those kind of shades. Other than like Aya and Rhino, which I think blended fine. They blended beautifully. That leads me to the Melalops like neon pigment. I really liked this. Um, I, I guess it's not really a first impression for like the actual color itself because I did use the yellow one and then I used the shade infrared. It was just the color. Uh, you could see it did get like a smidge patchy but I think that might be just user error. Again, I really like this. I think that this looks beautiful on the lid. I'm really really happy about this. I think that the packaging um, is a little iffy. I don't mind like this thing in itself. It's like the sifter in it. It comes out easily so you just have to be a little bit careful but I do like that it's kind of universal packaging for all of these so you know that everything is going to be like the same. Then that leads me to the concealers. So far I really like them. I like a thicker concealer though and I like a more full coverage concealer. I don't think that they're different um, formula wise. I just don't. I don't think that they're different. So and I think that they're very similar to the P. Louise Eye Base. If you have or been wanting to try the P. Louise Eye Base, maybe try the IT Cosmetics um, Bye Bye Under Eye on the lid. And like if you have it, or if you didn't want to pay the shipping from the UK to the States for the P. Louise Base, it could be like a viable option. The Coconut Bronzer, again, I think that this is too orange for my personal liking and what I was really looking for. I will use it. I will eventually use it up and pan it. Um, I was kind of hoping that this would be a dupe for the butter bronzer. It's not. Um, it's powdery. It's a lot more powdery than I was really anticipating. And again, the color isn't what I was expecting. It's definitely more orange. Then we went on to the blush. It was very pigmented. Did not anticipate that. However, I think that the color is lovely. I think it was a nice watermelony kind of like summery shade. It does have some sheen to it. There's like glitter pressed into this. So I do really like this. And I don't think I can ever say anything bad about the Sailor Moon collection, except for those glitterly obsessed. I don't think those are for me. Then moving on to my inner corner highlight, we use the shade Ain here by Dandelions Company. I, his formula is just so soft and buttery. I really, really like Dandelions Company formula. I did purchase more and they are actually in the mail and arriving today. So I, oops. And then this shade here is Dahlia. This is actually a pretty good dupe for um, Subculture Electric and it applies so much easier and nicer. So if you were looking for a dupe, Dahlia by Dandelions Company. Lips were the last thing we did, yeah. So doing lips, um, I used the two lip liners. I think that these formulas are actually really comparable. This is the Kiko Milano and then the ColourPop one. I think the texture wise, they feel lovely on the lips. Um, I thought I liked a drier lip liner formula, but I'm gonna wear this and see how I like it. And then the Butter Gloss was absolutely lovely. This was a gorgeous gloss and I, it's so comfortable. I'm very, very happy. So overall, I really like the look. I really liked the majority of the products, barring this wasn't what I was expecting, but everything else I really, really liked and I really enjoyed it. So I hope you guys liked this video. I know it was a long one, so thank you for sticking through. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!